Hey everyone, I put together this drag and drop project and wanted to walk you through how it works. First, let's see it in action here. When you drag the smartphone, it changes to another angle, then drop the phone around the charging cradle here, and it'll slide into the cradle and begin to charge as you can see from the screen changing. We can also see this little lightning bolt that kind of continues to uh, fade in and out, so it's got a little bit of uh, life to it. Now this isn't too complicated of a build, but there are a number of things going on here to make this work smoothly. Let's jump into Storyline and see how it's done. So let's take a look at the assets I have here. I have the phone at two different angles. I have the base and a little bit of a cutout of the base. This will be so the phone can kind of slide behind it in the cradle. I'll show that in a little bit more detail here in a bit. Uh, and then we have the charging screen. So the phone here has two states. Normal, which is the front-facing phone, and down, where the phone is at that angle. This way, when you press down on the phone, it'll show you the angle that would fit into the cradle. This makes this interactive a little bit more dynamic and adds a little bit of depth to everything. Now my first hurdle, actually let me delete this trigger so you can see the issue. Storyline sometimes will not set the state back to normal when you don't drag and drop kind of too far from the object itself. As you can see here, you can see it's, uh, I can leave, I can drop it and basically leave and it's still the, uh, the angled version of the phone. That's not what we want. So how do we fix this? Uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, I put a shape out here in the middle of uh, nowhere and create a trigger that says to change the state of my phone image to normal when the user clicks outside of that little shape. In Storyline, a click occurs when you release the object. So this way, it forces it back to normal. And with that trigger back in, you can see I no longer have that problem. I have a big hotspot here for us to drop the phone onto. Now you might notice this slide is not a freeform slide. The drag and drop is made possible through triggers alone. You can make this a freeform slide if you want to make this kind of part of a graded question, like a knowledge check, assessment question at the end. But we're not doing that here, so I don't want to add extra complexity to this slide that's not needed. So when I drop the phone on the hotspot, I want this phone animation layer to show. So without using freeform, I need to use this trigger here. I want to show the layer phone animation when the user drops the object that's the phone on this hotspot. And in Storyline, when you use a trigger to drag an object over or uh, dropped on, which we're using here, it will automatically make this object drag and droppable. Then when I show this phone animation layer, because I have the same phone on this slide, I want to hide the original phone and hotspot in the base layer. So I can do that here in the timeline. This way I won't see the original dropped phone. I'll see a whole new scene, one that I can control exactly where that phone's going to go. I have a motion path on the phone, so it slides down into the cradle. This animation lasts just a second, uh, so it isn't too slow, and I set the easing direction to out. This means it'll take off fast and kind of slow itself down as it nears the end point. This is a lot easier on the eye. The eye can easily follow where the object is, and it's a bit more realistic uh, to how someone's going to place that phone on the charger. You know, they're not going to slam it down on the charger. They're going to nicely place it on that charger. Now this charger has this little lip here, and the phone should slide kind of between that lip and the base. So I cut out that lip in Photoshop and have the animation between the cradle background, which is on the base layer, and that cutout that we have. Now the phone will slide kind of in between those two. Uh, and this adds a little bit more depth and realism to the scene. Then the charging background just fades in at the right time. So, you know, pretty simple timeline stuff. It just takes a little time to kind of keep playing around with this to make sure that all the timing feels smooth. I have this little charging icon that fades in and out. I just created a new layer. I added the icon, uh, which is actually from Insert Shapes. There's a little kind of lightning bolt icon there. And I have it fade in and out. But when the timeline ends, it hides this layer and then shows this layer again. So the icon will kind of keep looping. That basically creates a loop of this layer. Oh, and finally, make sure that you set this layer not to hide the other layers, uh, the other slide layers, because it will obviously hide your, your phone animation layer, which is not what we want. And that's it. It's, it's pretty simple. There's a lot of little things to think about, but uh, generally, it's, it's a pretty simple build. And this is the sort of thing that you could kind of reuse uh, often. I have another project now, which is like an orthopedic hip surgery. And it uses the same exact thing. Uh, basically, there's a drill that goes down into a uh, femur, 
and drag the uh, drill into the right spot. And when you release, you see it animate down into the femur, drill that out, and so on and so forth. And uh, I'm able to reuse that slide many times and just change out the various tools and images. And, um, you know, it looks great and is easy to use and, and relatively simple to put together. So I hope you can use something like this in your own projects.